Uh, I'm Brian Redman. I'm curator of archaeology and John Otis Howard chair of archaeology at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And today we're down in the archaeology department laboratory. Well, this, uh, this is a set of 10 uh, bones from a Ice Age ground sloth, uh, which in and of itself is pretty rare for Ohio. There's only been three that have been found. But more importantly, we noticed that one of the bones in this collection had what looked like stone tool cut marks on it, which has never been found in association with a, with a ground sloth in North America. So it seems to be evidence of human hunting or scavenging and then eventually butchering to remove the meat of this particular animal. Uh, specifically that uh, people came and, uh, like I said, either uh, hunted and killed this animal or they found a, an, a, a dying one perhaps and scavenged it. But specifically it shows that they cut the meat off of one part of the body, the leg bone, uh, or off of the thigh bone. And that they used stone tools, in other words prehistoric implements and not something more recent. Well, uh, it, it's the earliest evidence of human activity in Ohio. It, it dates by uh, several centuries earlier than any other what we call Paleo-Indian uh, sites in Ohio. In other words, sites produced by the first people to come to Ohio. We did not excavate these. These were uh, turned up back in 1988 as a small collection of bones in the attic of the uh, Firelands Historical Society Museum in Norwalk. And they were found by a man named Matt Burr, who was a member of the Society, and he also was a co-author on our recent article. Uh, it turns out, as Matt uh, identified, they were Ice Age sloth bones. And they may date back to as old as uh, 1914 or 1915 in terms of when they were collected by the museum or, or donated to the museum. They're very old. They've been in the museum a long time. Um, and where they came from before that, again, is up for question. We don't have any direct evidence of where they were excavated or dug up and by, or by whom, uh, but from some historical research uh, in the area, we've determined that they probably came from uh, what is now a small uh, bog uh, swamp remnant uh, in uh, southwestern Huron County, Ohio, on property owned by a family named Niver. And we also found historical references by a geologist named Oliver Hay, who was really the first person to describe these bones in, in two publications, the earliest dating to 1915. And Hay claims that he uh, was shown these bones or told of these bones by a person named Roe Niver. And at that time, Roe Niver was a student at the University of Illinois. And, but apparently he passed away very soon after that and there was no direct evidence for Hay of where they came from. Uh, Niver didn't tell him exactly where the bones came from. So we, uh, again, went and did some historical research. We actually found evidence or information about Roe Niver, who was at the University of Illinois in 1915. Uh, he passed away that summer at his family's home in North Fairfield in Huron County. Then we did some uh, detective work to determine where was the, no the Niver family farm, because we were uh, going on the assumption that the bones probably were found by the family, because uh, Oliver Hay in his publication says the bones, uh, what was left remained with the family. And this is what he said in 1923. So we actually found from uh, obituaries, we found uh, Roe Niver's death notice, um, a little bit about himself, uh, that he was, his grandfather was uh, a Niver, uh, and he lived on a piece of property in Norwich Township in southwestern Huron County. So uh, we also looked at some evidence of sediment records and where might bogs be, because we know these bones came out of an Ice Age bog. These wet sediments are what preserve these types of bones. And uh, we determined, we found the location by looking at some old plat maps where the Niver family farm was. And it turned out it was on a place called Niver Road, which is still there, which was nice to, to find that. And then uh, there was a small bog that still exists on the property where the family farm was. And that very likely is the location where these bones came from. It's called a Jefferson's ground sloth. And it's named that because it was actually first described by Thomas Jefferson. Uh, it was a large plant-eating animal, a herbivore that lived uh, all across North America over a wide area from the southeastern U.S. up into the Arctic. Uh, but as I said, there are only a few specimens that are known from Ohio. Uh, this particular individual uh, was large. Uh, it's probably nearly the second largest on record and would have weighed over a ton. And they could stand up on their hind leg legs. They were somewhat bipedal. They could stand up and it would probably have been about seven or eight feet high, uh, erect, standing up. Uh, but they didn't eat meat, they were uh, uh, plant eaters, we can tell from their teeth. Uh, and they probably ate vegetation, leafy vegetation, things like that. 
they had extremely large claws, and that's what the genus name Megalonyx mean. It means great claw. Um, so they would have been very impressive animals on the landscape, and of course, uh, a, a desirable prey species for Paleo Indians. Lots of meat on those animals. Um, maybe slow moving like modern sloths, which are much sm uh, smaller today. And, uh, but interestingly, this is the first evidence we have of people actually hunting those. But seems surprising uh, because they would have been a good prey species out there.